Hi, in this video we'll introduce some really important notation for dealing with sums and products more concisely. So as an example, suppose you wanted to write the sum of all integers between 1 and 10 inclusive, or the sum of all squares from 16 to 81. This is a lot of terms to write by hand. Thankfully, there's a better way. We can use summation notation. So this notation just means I start counting from i is equal to 1, and all the way up to 10, and then include terms for each value of i between 1 and 10. So the first term in the sum is just i is equal to 1, so we get 1, then i is equal to 2, we get 2, then i is equal to 3, 3, and so on, all the way until i is equal to 10, right here. We can also use the same notation on the right. So here we can start from k is equal to 4, all the way up to 9 of k squared. So the first term is just k is equal to 4, so we have 4 squared, then we have 5 squared, then we have 6 squared, and then all the way up until 9 squared. So here we just kept incrementing the value of k starting from 4 all the way up to 9, and each value of k adds a term to the sum. We can also write it starting from k is equal to 1 to 6 of k plus 3 squared, and you can verify that if you plug in all these values of k, you will get exactly the same terms. So in general, if x1, x2, x3, etc. are a sequence of numbers, then you can use the following notation for the sum of all the terms from x sub a all the way up to x sub b. So we sum from i is equal to a up to b of x sub i. So this actually generates all these terms because we start from i is equal to a and then includes all the integers from a up to b. And if s is a set and f is a function defined on the set s, then the following notation sums over all elements x in the set s of the function f of x. So we sum over all x in s of f of x. Let's do some examples. So the first one is summing from k is equal to 3 up to 7 of k to the 10th power. So the first term is when k is equal to 3, so we get 3 to the 10 here. Then k goes up to 4, we have a term for 4 to the 10. Then 5 to the 10, and then all the way until we get to k is equal to 7, that's the last term, so we get 7 to the 10. Okay, here we loop through all values of s, and for all values y in s, we go 2 to the y plus 5. So the first element in s is just 3, so we plug in 3 for y, so we have 2 to the 3 plus 5. The next element is 6, so we get 2 to the 6 plus 5, then 2 to the 8 plus 5, and then the last one, 2 to the 11 plus 5. Okay, what about this one? We sum from t is equal to 6 up to 8 of the constant 4. Well, the first term is when t is equal to 6, we get a 4. The next term, t is equal to 7, we get a 4. And the last term is when t is equal to 8, we still get a 4. So we actually get three 4s. What about this one? Sum from z is equal to 2 up to 1 of sine of z. Well, this is a trick question because there are actually no integers in this range. Because we started counting from z is equal to 2, but this is, this is already over the end of the sum, which is 1. So there are no terms in the sum. The sum is empty, so therefore it's 0. Okay, so in general, uh, if a and b are sets, the associative and distributive properties still hold the summations, just like they do with addition. So you can move parentheses around, that's the associative property. Uh, and in summation notation, you can just change the order in which you add these terms. So if you sum over all the elements x and a twice, you can just group the terms together. And you can also factor out a constant from each term in the sum. So if you have the summation over x and a of some constant times some value function of x, you can just pull the constant out if it's present in all terms in the sum. Similarly, you can also use the distributed property to expand product of sums. So if you have the product of summation over x and a and summation over y and b, uh, you can just expand it by writing out all the terms here. So we have sum over x and a and then sum over y and b of f of x times g of y. Okay, so product notation is pretty much the same as summation, it's just that we multiply instead of adding. It's literally the same definition. So this same thing holds, so to get the product of x of a up to x of b, we just do product from i is equal to a up to b of x of i. And similarly, this thing is also the same. So if s is set and f is a function defined on s, then this notation multiplies over all elements in s of f of x. So some the examples work literally the same way. So if we have the product of a is equal to 4 up to 7 of a, the first term is just 4, the next term is 5, 6, 7. So we multiply all those terms together. Then what about product of x in s of 8? Well, for every element in s, we loop through all of them, and then we produce an 8 term in the product. So that's just 8 repeated for each element in s. Similarly, this is an empty product because uh, we start z is equal to 2, but we, have, we should have already stopped at 1. So therefore, this is an empty product, but here the product is 1 because the multiplicative identity is 1. Thank you.